What's up DJ Tech Tools, it's Chris Brackley and today I've got a back to basics tractor tutorial for you. Now, if you are familiar with tractor, if you're experienced with it, this probably won't be much use to you, but if you're new to the platform or new to digital DJing in general, then this might well come in handy. What we're talking about today is layouts. Now you've got various different layout options within each layout in Tractor and you can set your own presets as well. So when you install Tractor for the first time, you've got four different options for your layouts in the drop down here on the top right hand side. Now, as you can see, I've gone in and changed these. So I've got six of my own customized ones that I use for different hardware setups and different situations. So I've got varieties for DVS control, two decks and four decks. I've got ones for HID control as well with X1s or with CDJs in HID mode. I've also got a customized browser version and one for preparation at the start of like long gigs and stuff when I've got new tracks to add. So it's really easy to you know tweak things from the interface itself. So you could double click, for example, on this gray bar at the top of each deck, double click on it and that will actually change the size of that deck from the micro right up to the advanced size. But you wanna keep that kind of tweaking to a minimum, that kind of trackpad used to a minimum when you're playing out. So it's easier if you have the layout manager with your own custom layouts preset and you can mini map that as well to go between different layouts as you wish. Now, just change them using the gear icon to get into preferences there on the top right hand side. And we go to layout manager down there on the left and then we can see all my custom ones I've got in there. You can add a new one, which is based always on one of the standard ones. So for example, this is a mixer one, which has got all the bells and whistles on there, all the gubbins that you could possibly want. You can rename by clicking in the title bar there and just rename. And you can move these up or down. So I'm gonna move that one to the top of my list. Now, so far so simple, but you need to bear in mind that not every single thing that you change in these preferences will go it will be different for each layout that you have. For example, the deck flavor, if we're going to deck layout on the left hand side and we look at the, let's change deck C to a remix deck. Now I've changed it for this layout, but if I then go through to my other four deck layouts, you'll see that deck C is still a remix deck. So that persists across all your different layouts. Uh, one, so you need to bear that in mind. One thing which does change is obviously the deck size themselves. So deck layout, we can choose between advanced right down to micro and you can show C and D as well there on the right hand side, just turn those on and off. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the actual deck sizing is that, for example, I've got a 1280 by 800 screen resolution screen here on my MacBook Pro. That means I haven't got the highest resolution out there. If you've got a massively high resolution like 1080p or something, um, or retina display at the highest settings, then you can fit pretty much anything you want on that screen. But as you see there, if I click through and make both my decks really large, the C and D as well as the A and B, then I'm actually gonna have A, not only much in terms of uh, track browsing ability, but also the global bar here at the top with the effect settings and the you know, master clock and so on will just disappear because Tractor will prioritize the decks on your layout. So you just, something to bear in mind as you're you know, making up these layouts for different situations, remember what you're gonna have in your individual layouts. The platter scope displays do come and go with each layout. So you can have them in one and not the other. That's why I've got them in my DVS ones and not the other ones. Your grid stuff will persist across all your different layouts. So you set that once and then forget it. Whatever layout you're using, that will stay the same. But what does change is cover art. So cover art, you can show it in one layout and you can hide it in another one quite simply. So for example, I've got it shown in my DJTT layout, but it's not there in my other ones. Uh, same goes for the phase meter as well. That one will change according to each layout. So you can have it in one layout and not the other. So that's gone there in that one. And it's back when we move to my pre-existing ones that I've built before. So there's lots of different options that you can tweak around with. All these stuff like your deck header information, that will persist across different layouts as well. There's no changing of that as you go through. Obviously different deck sizes do show different amounts of stuff. Um, there's also the mixer parameters and the actual layout of the mixer will change according to your preset layout. So for example, we've got on display on this one, we've got the EQs, we've got the cross fader, we've got the up faders, it's all there on display. I'm not a great believer in having the um, displays that I've got physically, you know, the actual controls I've got physically in front of me replicated on the screen. I don't really feel the need. So for example, the cross fader can go, the up faders can go. If I'm using a Z2 or if I'm using an external mixer, I don't really need to see that stuff. You might do, it's up to you. And that gives you a bit more space for the waveforms there as well. I do like to have this one, the filter key, gain, cue and balance. 
all there um, so just so I can have the auto gain and tweak those gains that it's preset if I feel the need to. I do use auto gain. I know some people hate it and some people love it, but I, I tend to use it. Uh, I just find it makes it a little bit easier externally mixing. So there we go. Very, very straightforward in terms of getting that done. Now the global section itself is quite useful and if I have space for it, I like to have it displayed. But as I say, if I don't have the space for my actual decks, then you know, it's got to go. Unfortunately, that's the one thing that will be pushed off but what you can do is maybe tweak your browser. So for example, get rid of the browser details, the browser error messages and so on down at the bottom in the browser section of the preset of the uh, preferences. And that will give you a little bit more space perhaps to fit that global section in at the top as well. So as you can see, there's lots of ways to tweak around with this. You know, you can basically have a setup for every possible imaginable setup that you're going to use um, from you know different controllers, different types of gigs, uh, different preparation work that you're doing and so on so there's lots and lots of things to play with and it's worth spending a bit of time offline beforehand create some of your own you can create as many as you want as far as I can tell there seems to be no limit I created I think 20 before and they all just came up absolutely fine you can scroll between the whole lot and as I say you can MIDI map those as well so you can actually jump to a specific one with a MIDI control if you really want to keep away from that track so for a bit more detailed information, please do check out djtechtools.com and thanks for watching.